Hello, statistics students. This is your instructor, Dr. Todd Daniel, and I am going to show you how to do a binomial test for proportions using JASP. Along the way, I will also explain the difference between a binomial test and a proportion test. But let's begin by asking ourselves, what is a binomial test? It is a parametric procedure, meaning that it uses values drawn from a population to compare a sample. It tests whether a sample proportion is statistically significantly different than a population proportion. In this example with the polar bears, we have a population value of a 0.52, but a sample drawn from that population renders a population value of 0.58. Is that sample 0.58 proportion different, statistically significantly different from the population, we will use a binomial test to figure it out. Now you may recall if you were enrolled in my stats class that I demonstrated how to do a proportion test. Now as I'm showing you JASP, I'm going to use a binomial test. Why and what's the difference? Well, both the proportion test and the binomial test compare a sample proportion to a population proportion. And they both use a normal approximation. But you may recall that with the proportion test, you have to have n times p greater than 5 and n times 1 minus p greater than 5 in order to use that normal approximation. So overall, the binomial test is more accurate, especially when you have small sample sizes. So in general, if you have a choice, I would go with the binomial test. And of course, another reason why I am showing you the binomial test is that JASP gives us the option for doing a binomial test, but it does not have a setting for proportion test. Let's learn some more about this research. In 2018, a poll in San Francisco reported that 52% of internet users had ordered food delivery to their homes. After the 2020 pandemic, another poll was conducted of 150 San Franciscans asking whether they had ordered food for home delivery. 58% said yes. Does this sample provide sufficient evidence to conclude that home food delivery changed during the pandemic? To answer that question, we will use our five steps of hypothesis testing to select the appropriate test, establish the hypotheses, select a level of significance, run the test, interpret the results, and write up the findings. We will begin with step number one to select the appropriate test. Let's figure out what kind of data we have. We have a single sample, and in that sample, all of the responses are yes, and no, meaning that you had to answer one or the other. You couldn't answer both, and if you answer neither, then you weren't included in the sample. This gives us a setup for a binomial outcome. Also, because the answers are yes and no, we can divide the total yes by the total number in the sample, 150, to calculate a proportion. Therefore, we have a sample, which has been drawn from a population, the sample has a proportion of 0.58, even though the population it was drawn from was 0.52. Does the difference between these proportions represent just random chance, or are they statistically significantly different? We will use a binomial test in order to determine which is the best explanation. Because we know that we're using a binomial test, we should begin by checking the assumptions for that test to make sure that our data comport with what they should be. Number one, we have a single sample. It's categorical. It's the question of whether or not you've ordered food during the pandemic and had it delivered to your house. The sample participants should be randomly selected. We'll assume that they are from the word problem. The dependent variable are counts. Options that are one or the other, there's not a third option, there's not a zero option, it's yes or no, and those counts can then be calculated as a proportion. 
the proportion of people who answered yes. Independence. The probability of each event should be identical. So when you ask someone, have you ordered food during the pandemic? You should get either a yes or a no. And the answer that one person gives you is not influencing the answer that someone else gives you. Normality, we're going to use a normal approximation. If you're using a proportion test, then you must check to make sure that n times p is greater than 5 and n times 1 minus p is greater than 5 before you can use your normal approximation. The settings for a binomial test include a null hypothesis that says that the sample proportion is the same as the population proportion. And it should be. The proportion of the sample should be the same as the proportion for the population from which the sample is drawn. We would write that as h sub 0 colon p equals p sub 0, where the p sub 0 will actually be the proportion that we get from the population. We'll substitute a number there. And the alternative hypothesis, h sub 1 colon p does not equal p sub 0. Again, substituting a number which is the proportion from the population. We're going to use our typical 0.05 alpha level. And because we're using a normal distribution, the critical value will be the same as it is for any normal distribution, positive or negative 1.96, based on an alpha level of 0.05. You can, of course, set that alpha level at 0 0.01, 0 0.10, or any other value. We're now ready to work through the remaining steps of hypothesis testing, moving now to step two, determine the null and alternative hypothesis. Our research question, is the sample proportion statistically significantly different from the population proportion? For our null hypothesis, we would write sample proportion is no different than the population proportion. And in symbols, this would be written as h sub 0 colon p equals 0.52, with 0.52 being the proportion from the population. Our alternative hypothesis for a two-tailed test would be that the sample proportion is different than the population. And in symbols, we would write that as h sub 1 colon p does not equal 0.52. Why are we using a two-tailed test for this research question? We're using a two-tailed test because changes in either direction would be interesting. Whether San Franciscans ordered significantly more or significantly less during the pandemic would be interesting to know. And so we will use a two-tailed test, knowing that changes in either direction toward either tail would be important for us to know. In step three, we select our criteria for significance. We have a two-tailed test with an alpha level of 0.05, and our critical value, as it is for any normal distribution, is a positive or negative 1.96. We are now ready to calculate the statistics, and for that, we will go to JASP. You can see that I've placed my data set on my computer desktop. It's called Food Delivery, and it's an Excel file. Let's open up this data in Excel to see what we're dealing with. There are two tabs. The first says Home Delivery, and this is the data that you will use if you are enrolled in my stats class. This is the data you'll need for your test. But Tab 2 is video, and that uses a different set of data with a different outcome so that I can show you how this test is done and your results for the test will be different than what I'm demonstrating here in the video. You can see that all of the answers are listed as either yes or no. The single column represents our single sample, and each of the data points are either yes or no. We could use the yes or no to create a proportion, such as the proportion of people who responded yes in this survey. But because we're working in JASP, we need to save this data as a comma separated values file or CSV. I'll save it to the desktop.
it will save tab B or the video tab because that is the active part of the data set. And there's my fooddelivery.csv waiting for me on the desktop. Now I'm going to open up JASP. I'm using JASP version 0.14.1. I'm going to go to Open, Computer, Desktop, and choose the fooddelivery.csv dataset. Click on Open. And there's my data. The level of the data are a nominal text variable, and this is going to work just fine for our binomial test. We get to our binomial test by going to the Frequencies menu and choosing Binomial Test. We will begin by moving our data into the variables box. And we see that we get proportions for both the no and the yes responses. Our test value is set by default at 0.5, but you may recall that our population value is a 0.52. We can adjust that right here. I'm also going to get our descriptive plots and the confidence intervals with a 95% confidence interval around the proportion. Let's interpret these findings. I'm going to open this a little more so we can see all of the results in one window. You'll notice that we have counts for both yes and no, but we're interested only in the yes counts. We can interpret the statistical significance of these findings by examining the p-value, which is 0.165 for the yes responses, and is greater than 0 0.05. We also can interpret the 95% confidence interval around the proportion. It's a 0.497 to a 0 0.660, which you see does include our hypothesized proportion for the population of 0.52. So because the null hypothesis value appears within our confidence interval, and our p-value is greater than 0.5, we can determine that this proportion is not statistically significantly different than the population proportion. We can also see in our descriptives plot that our confidence interval captures the 0.52 from our population, all of this leading to the conclusion that we do not have statistical significance. Having examined the output, what do we conclude? We make a decision that we fail to reject the null hypothesis. The sample did not order food in a statistically significantly different proportion than our comparison value of 0.52. And here is how we would write up our findings in APA style. A binomial test was used to determine whether the proportion of San Franciscans who order food for home delivery has changed since 2018. The proportion of customers, P equals 0.58, did not differ statistically significantly from the population, P equals 0.52, with a probability of 0.16, 95% confidence interval, 0 0.50 to 0.66. This suggests that survey respondents in San Francisco did not treat themselves to home delivery more often during the 2020 pandemic. And that is how you do a binomial test in JASP. Thanks for watching, and be sure to check out the channel for more videos about doing statistical testing in JASP, SPSS, R, or Excel.